Hello everyone, I'm Ben, and in this video we're going to be creating studio lighting in Blender. I'm using Blender 2.9. Let's jump into it. Okay, so here I've got a default scene that I've added a character that I'm going to be using as my subject in the studio. And I'm just going to delete the default light, default camera, and this default cube. Okay, I'll grab my character, press G, Z, and move it up so that it's sitting just above the origin. Now we're ready to start creating our scene for our lighting. And first of all, we're going to start with the cyclorama floor and wall. So I'm going to press Shift A, and under Mesh, I'm going to choose Plane. Now, ordinarily this might be the right size if you're doing something to scale, but we'll see here that I'm working at quite a large scale. This character is uh, maybe maybe two meters in diameter. So uh, a public art sculpture, that's what this is, two meters by perhaps three meters high, very big. And so what I'm going to do is say this should be uh, perhaps uh, 40, 40 meters long and 20 meters deep. So quite large here, you might want to work at a smaller scale. Now the next thing I want to do is get the wall up here. So I'm going to create a crease along here, basically where I want to start the fold of the wall. And I, to do that, I'm just going to jump from object mode into my edit mode by pressing tab. Press Control R to insert an edge loop. And I'll click once to drop it down and click it again to confirm that location. Now I'm going to Control R and insert another one at the halfway point behind. And this is gonna allow me to create a little bit more control for where I want that curvature to occur. Next, I'm just gonna go and make a selection on this back edge, but you can see I'm not in edge mode, so I'll press Control 2 or select edit our edge mode up here. Grab my back edge, and I'm just gonna move this up. So I'm gonna press G, Z, and I'll move it up 15 units. So it looks a bit extreme right now. Press Enter on the numpad. Then I'm gonna select this edge here, and I want to bevel it, so I'll press Control B and start dragging that out and really push it. That's looking just just spiffing. Okay, I'll come down to my bevel options here, and the width, yeah, I think for my purposes, three meters. That's about good. Maybe give it 15 segments, so it's got some uh, nice curvature. That looks lovely. And um, okay, ready to start creating some lights. So for the lights. In a studio, oh, I'm still in edit mode. I'll press tab to jump out of edit mode. <coughs> so for our lights, what I'm going to do is create an area light because they're going to simulate a nice soft box light. And I'm just going to go shift A. And then down under light, we can choose area, the fourth one. This will create an area light at the origin. And you can see right here that I actually want to create quite a large area light that's proportional to my scene. So this is going to be 10 meters. And can't quite see it now. So I'm going to move it over to the right, in my case, 20 meters, and I'm going to rotate it um, on the Y, let's say 90. That's looking good. And lift it up on the Z, uh, 5 meters. Okay. And with that one done, I'm going to mirror this over to the other side of my stage. So I'll just Control C, Control V, and then all I have to do is, at my transform location, I'm going to change my X from 20 to minus 20 and change my rotate Y from 90 to minus 90. Wonderful. Okay. Last thing I'm going to do now is just go and have a little look to see how this appears at the moment. So I'll turn on my rendering and so we should see something in Eevee and you can see it's not doing a whole lot. So I'm going to select my first area light here, the one on the, the right hand side you can see, come down to my light properties or object data properties in this case and set the power up maybe to 1600 watts now we're talking okay i'll do the same on the left hand side setting up to 1600 watts oh that's a little bit more than i was expecting and i'll actually go ahead and split the colors here so that i've got a nice warm cool contrast and so you might want to play around with some different opposing colors but i'm going to be using this basically this uh kind of a little bit of a baby blue bit of a chalk blue and then over on the right hand one maybe i'll go for something that's a little bit peachy because peaches are delicious and yeah oh yeah i'd fall asleep in that studio any day okay so the next thing i want to do is have a nice long light at the top that's a neutral one so i'm going to select this final light and i'll rename these actually so double click area and i'll call this one left and double click this one area underscore right then I'm going to control C control V and with the new one I'll double click and rename this one to 
overhead. I'm just going to go and zero out the X position for it. And then I'm going to zero out the Z position because I'm actually going to put it up to 10 units high for the Z. And for the Y, I'll set that to zero. That's pointing straight down. That's looking pretty good in and of itself. And if I was going for maybe a bit of a warmer look, I might use something like that. I'll change my color for this overhead area light from this peach to, pardon me, a white. And with that done, I may even crank this up a little bit. Something like 2400 watts. Okay, now I'd like this to be a little bit more suitable for perhaps car renders. So I might even run this um, overhead light to be about twice as long as it is. And if I don't want to scale it up uniformly, then I can change the shape here from a square to a rectangle. And just set that size X, I think it is in this case, yeah, size X to 20 meters. Okay, great. Now that's looking pretty cool. And let's just go and um, take it up a little bit. So we can switch our render engines. I'm going to go to my render properties here. Render engine, EV, switch to cycles. And immediately we see a lot more bounce light. I can change my feature set from supported to experimental. So I can change my device from CPU to GPU compute. All right, lovely. Now I want to make sure that my viewport rendering is doing plenty of samples in case I walk away and get a cup of coffee. And I'm just going to have a little look. All right, so we got some lighting here. We can turn off our little overlays if we want to have a cleaner look. And I'm liking that. Now, one other thing we can do uh, to give it a cool look is to come down here under film and we can change the exposure. Sometimes you may want to take this up a little bit or down depending on the look that you're going for. And I'm just going to give this guy a little bit of a color. So I'll create a material. So I'm going to grab Hadoop, go to the material. And you can see he's got a material already. Fantastic. I'm going to set him to have a bit of a skin color. That looks good. Let's give him some blood flowing in his skin. So in the subsurface, blow skin. And it'll be 0.4 meters because he's huge. And the subsurface color, well, we're picking up a lot of blood. That's mostly the color that we're picking up below the surface of his skin. So something like that, hey? I think, yes, he's looking very warm and happy now. Lovely. Okay, with that done, we might just want to press Shift A and go ahead and add a mesh UV sphere. And I'm just going to press G and move this one up into the scene. And with this one, I'll create a new material again. So I'll say new. And I'll set the metallic all the way up. Now, I'm going to also right click on the sphere, and this may not come up in the video, and choose Shade Smooth. All right. Hopefully that's worked for you. And over here in the materials, I'm going to go and drop this roughness down. Now, a little bit of a gotcha. You'll notice that there is this kind of gray background and this looks really fake. So we just want to make sure that we drop that out. So I'm going to come over here to the world properties and under color, I'm going to change this to black. Okay, now we have a beautiful high dynamic range between the blacks of the studio curtain and, uh, and our light sources. So it looks really dynamic. And uh, I'm just going to give this guy some eyes and uh, that's about it. Hope that helps and I'll see you in another video.